Welcome guys, I'm Leo here, hope you're having a great day. And in this video we'll talk about differences between promises and observables. And I think discussing this topic in the context of Angular is a great idea because Angular as a framework provides a lot of ways that we can use uh, observables and specifically library RxJS. We can use it with uh, HTTP requests, we can use it with forms, with route param changes, and uh, we can chain them together in many different ways. But also we have promises, and uh, this question arises a lot, so let's uh, discuss it. Uh, we will have uh, two parts to this video. The first will be a more theory oriented, we'll discuss things on a higher level, so we understand the key differences. And in the second part, we will have a very specific practical example where we compare promises and observables directly. We will take some simple problem and uh, first solve it with promises and then with observables and uh, then we'll make our conclusions that way. So let's start the theory part first and uh, talk about promises. Let's think of some analogy first. Imagine a scenario during a day that uh, you want to order some food online. You open up your laptop or your phone and uh, you place your order. Here we have to think about this carefully. Because that you made the order, it doesn't mean that somehow your items, your purchased items will magically instantaneously appear at your doorstep. A store must receive your order and then maybe they will fulfill your request, uh, they will pack your items and eventually you will get your items or they might you know, find out that they cannot fulfill your request and they might cancel your order and contact that say okay you know we are sorry we cannot give you you know fulfill your order so we have to cancel it the idea here is that while you are while you're waiting you are not just stuck in space and time uh, waiting for your order or response from uh, your store you might do something else you might read some books play games or do something else and eventually when the result will be available to you either uh, order will be cancelled or you receive your items then you can react to it and uh, process these items so the idea is the similar with promises you know we have some a single operation uh, a single process that might take some time and the results aren't immediately available. And these scenarios are really modeled with promises. For example, our code, when, when issues such an operation, then uh, continues working on the other things. And once the result is available to our application, then it will process this in some way. Either it will get rejected or maybe some error will happen or it will be fulfilled. And there is, you know, this similar idea with promises. So we have a single operation, single tasks that might take some time and results are not immediately available and that's the key with promises. Now let's imagine another scenario, let's say uh, we have a phone and a Facebook or WhatsApp or you know some messenger and during the day we might receive different messages you know from our friends. We might receive zero messages or more messages, it doesn't matter. The idea is that in this case, we are some kind of an observer. Let's say in this case, we are observing our phone. We receive notifications on our phone and we receive these messages in a different times throughout the day. And based on the message, we might decide to react to it. We might uh, do some actions. We can ignore it. We can reply to it and all sorts of things. So the basic idea is that in this case, we are some kind of an observer and our phone or a laptop, if you will, is some kind of an observable. We observe it while we, you know, we might be doing something else, taking a walk, or reading a book or something, and then uh, we might get some notifications at different times in, uh, in day. And uh, in this case, we are acting like an observer and our phone or laptop or any other device in this case uh, is an observable and we observe it you know that that's where the word comes from this is the basic idea uh, from a high level uh, about the observables we have uh, observers and we have observables and we can think of observables as um, value changes or uh, events or some um, set of different values throughout the time 
and the idea is that we have uh, these values or events can happen many times, can happen zero times. This uh, might end completely as well. Now, difference between promises and observables on a high level is that uh, promises can be used to model a single asynchronous operations. You know, one operation, one response. Uh, and as in the case of observables, there can be many changes, there can be many events, many different values over time. And uh, this uh, difference between single and many is really key difference on a fundamental level between promises and observables. Of course, there are technical differences as well. And uh, so this uh, library specifically that I'm talking about right now, RxJS, uh, has many uh, powerful features with it that uh, allows us to combine different observables together and chain them and achieve really, really complex user interactions. Now, let's, uh, let's uh, talk about some uh, practical examples uh, where we can use promises and observables. When you think about the promises and uh, single asynchronous operations, the first thing that comes to my mind is HTTP requests. Uh, when we are making some request to an API, we don't have the results immediately available. And that is the key with promises. So our app, instead of being stuck, when we make this request, keeps on working and doing other things. And once the results are available, once this promise gets resolved, uh, our app uh, processes the request uh, as it is needed. Another case can be with timeout. You know, we have uh, a timeout. We want to uh, execute some code whenever a certain time passes and we can model this with promises and we can have a promise that will get resolved after a certain amount of time. And then once it gets resolved, then we can uh, do some actions. Another example can be that we have some model service and we issue this uh, model, we open this model from our uh, code and uh, we don't know when the interaction of this model and the user will be finished. The user might entirely close the tab, might click cancel button, might close the model, might do something else. And the idea is that eventually this model will give us result, either it will be dismissed or some action will be performed a single time. So single open of a model, a single response here as well. Also, uh, another thing uh, can be web workers. Maybe we are processing, processing something inside the web worker. And uh, once we get the results, uh, we can you know, wrap this uh, operation, this async thing uh, inside the promise. And once it's uh, finished, we can resolve the results uh, of web worker with our promise. So uh, these are you know, a few examples and list can go on but these are very basic and I think it gives you a good idea uh, what uh, promises can be used for. Now let's move on to observables. Now the first thing that we might think about are web sockets with observables. When we open up the WebSocket connection, we might receive many different messages over time. We might receive zero messages or even more messages and eventually this connection might be closed. So this is a very, uh, the, the observables in this case our very natural way to model the interaction with web sockets. We can represent this socket connection with observable and then observable will emit these changes or miss messages and rest of the application can observe this observable that uh, describes the web socket connection. And this is a great way. And if, if we uh, look at the promises in this case, we're limited because, well, in the case of promises, we have a single operation, but that's not really a single operation. It can emit many different changes or values or messages over time. Another thing, um, we can think about the time intervals. You know, here we had a timeout with promises, but also when we have time intervals, we might want to execute a certain code based on some time intervals. And we can represent this interval with observable, uh, which will emit or uh, throw an event based on the given interval while with promises, we could only model this timeout, this single timeout. Also, uh, this is uh, this can be very unnatural, but we can model a button clicks with observables. Well, user might click a button once uh, or zero times or many more times, 
And if we can, uh, you know, if we manage to somehow wrap these clicks as observables, then our application can, uh, instead of directly listening to button clicks, our application can work with observables and observe the button clicks. Every click on the button would, co would cause another uh, event uh, and uh, our app can observe that. Now, if you think about these observables, uh, can, we can think of observables as some kind of an extension of promises because we can represent all of this here with observables as well. In this case, uh, the thing is that this observable will only emit uh, one event for one request, a one execution of code for timeout, a one result for the, a single model or one result for a given web worker. And, in the, and because of that, observables can be used to model a really, really complex user interactions. Also, the advantage of using observables in this case is, in all of these cases that they can be chained together in many interesting ways and it will eventually now when we are using this single interface uh, eventually it makes our code easier to uh, reason about so let's summarize our video here the key differences between promises and observables is that promises are really meant to be used to model a single asynchronous operation while observables can be used uh, for single operations but also for the operations that might emit uh, different uh, results or different values different set of changes over time and that's the key here uh, we will see technical details in the next video uh, where we solve the exact same problem with two different approaches with promises and observables and we will get, we'll get the better idea why observables can be a better choice in most of the situations. So that's it uh, for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, click the like button, uh, subscribe and share it with your friends.